live from the Computer History Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2016. Brought to you by Mirantis. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Lisa Martin. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley for OpenStack Silicon Valley or OpenStack SV. The hashtag on Twitter to follow the conversation is OSSV16. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signals from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Lisa Martin. Our next guest is Matthew Lodge, CEO of, of Weaveworks, also former VMware, but also, also on the um, uh, Linux Foundation Cloud Native. Cloud Native Computing Foundation, yes. Cloud Native Computing Foundation, CUBE alumni. Welcome back, good to see you. Great, thanks, it's um, uh, good to be back on. So a lot of things going on in your world. Obviously, yeah. you know, we love, we just talking about you know, former VMware and, and the trajectory of that is, but now with the cloud exploding, yeah. hybrid cloud at the center of it, you know, nothing more hotter than cloud native, which means basically app and app friendly environment yeah. that right. requires a lot of coolness underneath the covers. Yes. Like Dockers, like Kubernetes, all yet not baked out yet, but <laughs> getting there. Yeah. Give us your thoughts on the current landscape of cloud. Well, I think I mean, it's one of the goals of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is to accelerate the adoption of that style of architecture and that way of building software. I think the big difference here is that this is about applications. Right? It's, so it's really about trying to empower software developers to build faster, better applications, more effective, more resilient. Right? So there's distributed systems design. So it's a little different to some of the previous you know, shifts that would be more about infrastructure. So I got to ask you the question because I'm, you know, Dave Vellante who's not, couldn't make it here. Um, <laughs> we've been, we talk about this all the time because it's our seventh year doing theCUBE. Yes. In 2010 at VMworld, uh, Paul Moritz yes. laid out the architecture. Right. Which essentially is the cloud native concept. Now the moves have been different, awkward at the time, but you know, yeah. as it evolves, it's playing out almost exactly the way he laid it out. Yes. Applications at the top of the stack, playing nicely with some sort of orchestration, middleware yeah. layer, and then obviously infrastructure as code, if you will underneath. That's right. So it's kind of all playing out. Do you see it the same way? And, and what's the current version of the map? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, I mean, Paul is a great, is a great visionary, so um, it's not really a surprise that uh, it's very similar to, to what he was thinking about in terms of architecture and what he was trying to do with VMware at the time. I think, um, you know, the big thing that wasn't around then was containers, and, and that has turned into be this really great enabling technology for this style of architecture. Right, and it's made it a lot easier to make that transition. Because we've been here before in you know, things like service-oriented architecture and similar sort of architectural approaches previously, but the execution wasn't really there in the way that it is now. And then from our perspective, we are seeing a big uptake in customers who have chosen to adopt containers and are looking to figure out how the best way to do that. It's not a question of will we do this, or we're kicking the ties, it's like we are going to do this, can you help? So I got to ask you, this is really an interesting conversation because we have a little historical uh, perspective now, yeah. but this really comes down to architecture. And one of the questions I get all the time yep. here on theCUBE and also out in the wild when I'm walking the streets of Palo Alto or Boston or wherever, is the number one question is, I want to move to the new world. Yeah. I want to move my business and be transformative. I want to get the trophy. I want to drive top line revenue. Yes. I want to do better things. Yeah. And it never seems to be a technology conversation per se. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's some stuff that work out, but yep. it, it's an architectural mindset shift. That's right. Can you share with the folks that shift and what that preferred architecture is? Sure. And, and kind of take a minute to explain that, because I think that yeah. seems to be this, the one thing that people seem to be asking for. Yes, the thing that people are after is agility. They want to go faster. That's, that's the business driver for all of this. And that's why they care about it if they're in, on the business side and, and not on the technology side. And so if you're a hotel company, in the past you've had a booking system, you had an IT team, but you probably bought something off the shelf and customized it, you didn't necessarily write any software yourself. Today you're trying to compete with Airbnb, who has a really slick application and a nice website. And so writing software yourself is now part of competitive differentiation. It is part of the value your customers perceive of you. And so Versus outsourcing some contract firm or Yeah, or, or taking agency. something off the shelf, right? Yes. Right? So, and you look, you're looking to be different. General purpose software. Right. And so that has changed, you know, why, so a lot more organizations care about soft, writing software than ever before. And then they want to write software the way that Facebook and Google and Amazon and you know, all of those guys do it, Netflix, all those guys. And so Netflix has really popularized a lot of the sort of architectural approaches and the patterns here. 
and containers makes it much, much easier to follow that same model. You know, it was quite difficult before, you know, Netflix was way out ahead of everybody else. Containers make it much, much easier. And so that style of architecture lends itself very well. And you know, that's why in the charter of the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, we're talking about, about it being container-based, because that is the substrate that all the stuff is running on. So that's what the business people are all about. So let's break down that architecture. I yeah. know Agile is not necessarily an architecture, it's a concept, a methodology. Yes. What architecture specifically, using containers would be in an architectural component. What are the right. other things that hang around that? What, how does so, it hang together? So the, the breaking down into microservices, the idea that you can take an application, decompose it into these individual pieces, rather than having lots of people working on one big code base, having lots of small code bases. And when you do that, lots of things change, right? In the past, you had one code base, so you'd pick one language for your application, because everybody had to write yeah. on the same code base, right? So you yeah. couldn't have people write in different languages. Well, now with microservices, you can. If there is some part of your application that needs a functional language, and that's, that's a better way to solve that problem, you can write a service in a functional language, and it doesn't matter as everybody Pick else. the tool for the job. Pick the tool for the job. And make it a microservice. Right. Same with databases. You know, you had to all agree, you know, you end up with Oracle Database, because that's got all these features you need to do everything in your application. Well, now, maybe there's something better for time series data, and there's a different database you know, for unstructured data, and then maybe there's Oracle for your relational stuff and transactional integrity. And so, it's really changing the way that software is being written. So speaking of change, yes. one of the things that was talked about earlier today and a number of times on the program is the cultural change that's needed yes. to enable com companies to become more competitive. How are you seeing enterprises with traditional um, yep. enterprise applications trying to, to manage that and embrace cloud native applications? How are you seeing them do that successfully? So what we're seeing is that they're, they pick a project where they, they think um, something you know, in cloud native and, and container based is going to help them be successful. And so they pick some, uh, something that is important but is not sort of bet the farm. And they put a team together and what we see is that that team works together and they're trying to figure out what is their new stack going to be, right? What, what are, how are they going to uh, orchestrate this application? How are they going to architect it? How are they going to organize? And then they're going after that and building it out and learning from that experience and then picking the next project, maybe something a little harder. So I had a customer last week, they're going to start with all of their stateless services for their website, right? So all the things, they're going to avoid some of the hard problems around persistent data and some of the other challenges and start with all the stateless stuff. And they're going to do that first, they're going to learn from that experience and go from there. So that's the iterative approach, you know, picking something that's important but not too important um, seems to be pretty successful. And, and so that's helping them to, to be able to launch things faster to be more competitive or is that in some cases an inhibitor? It's helping them to launch things faster and be, and be more competitive. And it's also helping them build applications that are less fragile. So there's a, you know, the, the expectation of 24 by seven availability for everything, right? So they need to be able to do that. In terms of, uh, of growth, I uh, wanted to pick your brain on some of the collaboration that Weave has done within this community, this open source yeah. community. How are you leveraging the community to, to grow and really seize new opportunities for Weave? So, you know, as an open source uh, company, it really is all about community in terms of how you build the product in the first place, the interaction that you get from open source, but also being able to work with other open source components. And that's one of the things the CNCF is keen to do is incubate different open source projects. So for example, uh, the second project into the CNCF is Prometheus. You know, so uh, we're adopting Prometheus as our monitoring and time series and you know, all of the data uh, for, uh, for WeWorks products. And so being able to collaborate that way and work with other organizations also, also interested in similar challenges, how do you monitor a distributed microservices-based application? Um, you know, open source has really emerged as the way to, to manage that kind of collaboration. Talk about the Open Source Foundations and the community here because yeah. we've been following OpenStax, we were there from the beginning. Yes. Of course, I was very critical of the foundation when they had, it felt like a marketing program, yeah. but they quickly changed right. and became very code oriented. Remember the second, third year was vote with your code, yeah. changed at the top, and then really since then, there's been a great trajectory, right. really driven by, I would say hardcore open source coders, but yet an eye on the prize. Yes. They've zigged and zagged, dodged some bullets, if you will. Right. Certainly the growth on Amazon is just been spectacular. Yep. Azure's come in, you know, elbows you know, flying. Yes. Yet it's healthy and it's survived and on the peak of thriving. Right. What's your thoughts on that next step? What needs to happen for, for OpenStack? OpenStack and OpenCloud to thrive? 
I think um, I think it's really at a turning point. I think you know the Marantis uh, announcement. You know, I know Craig McClucky and I think um, Brandon from uh, CoreOS were talking about this this morning here at the conference. And the realization that it's about this shift onto this next model of architecture that we've been talking about here. And so the question for OpenStack is what is, what is OpenStack's role in that environment? Because you could say, well, I can run, I can run all my stuff on containers now, so, so why do I need to run VMs? Right? And I was talking to a technical architect of one of the bigger players, and so they have customers like that now, where they have all these very long-lived VMs running on these OpenStack clouds, and they're, they're running Docker. So there is a lot of um, churn and a lot of you know, develop, software development and um, lots and lots of change going on that's happening at the container level, not at the VM level. The convenience of containers is yes. quite interesting, disrupting right. the VMware market. Yeah, it's, or, it's, or it's, virtualization. It's, well, anybody who's focused on the VM, right, it's a challenge for them. So it's, yeah. it's true for VMware, but it's also true for OpenStack. So the question for OpenStack is, okay, if I'm thinking about my, my next, what do I roll out? Do I roll out Kubernetes or do I roll out OpenStack, right? I have limited balance on the team. Is that, what's the right thing to do here? And so you know, figuring out what OpenStack becomes in the future, I think, is a, is a key question for that community. And you think that they're in a good position to solve that problem? Well, the interesting thing about OpenStack is it's gotten broader, right? So it's not just about running VMs. You know, you've got identity services yeah. and you've got storage and you know, different flavors of storage. You've got all kinds of different you know, projects. You've got things for running. Um, managing bare metal that are still very relevant, yeah. right? So you've got all these different components. Yeah. But maybe in the future, OpenStack looks different really just for that. Yeah. One yeah. Of the th sorry, John, one of the things that they were talking about in that context this morning was this need to, um, it's not us versus right. VMs, containers, bare metal, it's and with. So mm -hmm. looking at some of these larger enterprise organizations, is your vision that they're going to have to coexist very well, OpenStack, with these other players in order for them to succeed, just as these enterprises were dependent on OpenStack to be competitive? Well, I think if you've already deployed OpenStack, it definitely is and. The question, if you haven't, though, it is an either-or decision because, you know, you, it's, OpenStack is a big, complex thing to deploy, right? And that's always been the, the criticism of OpenStack. And it's why you've got you know really great services from people like Morantis and IBM and Red Hat and you know who've got it down to an art for like we're going to make this easier for you, right? But the question for an organization is if I'm really trying to serve my developers, what do I really want to focus on? Where do I want to spend my time and my resources in that adoption? And so I do have to make choices. Matthew, talk about what you're working on now. What are you excited? Obviously, the Cloud Native Foundation certainly is fun. Yeah. But you also are Chief Operating Officer of a company. Yes. Um, Weaveworks. Right. Obviously, surprisingly, not surprisingly, microservices and yes. containers. <laughs> so hence, uh, a little bit of bias, but I think it's right on the money. I don't think it's bias in the sense of, you know, yeah, over bias. That, that, those are people we talk to, yes. I mean, that's, <laughs> you know, we are seeing the same thing, so. Yeah. But what are you guys working on? How's business? Give us an update on what, what yeah. uh, Weaveworks is doing, what you're excited about. So yeah, WeaveWorks is primarily known, and the you know, first thing we did was uh, networking for, for containers and making it very easy to deploy your application across multiple hosts, multiple Docker hosts, and making that very simple. Um, and then we graduated from there into understanding, okay, I, I rolled out my application, I wired everything together, and that was it doing, and that's WeaveScope, which is our yeah. uh, second major product, and that's going very well. So for us, you've seen a lot of adoption of WeaveNet. It's a crucial challenge that uh, many customers need to solve. And then WeaveScope is picking up as people realize, okay, now I built this thing and I'm having a hard time really understanding what's going on. And I have different problems now with microservices than I had yeah. with applications in the past in VMs. Because I could go look at the VM and I could look at CPU and memory and I.O. and I got a pretty good idea of what's going on. It's not like that with a microservice. So would you agree that automation, which is everyone strives to get to, yeah. Obviously, that's pretty, not, well, don't need to debate that. But the, getting to automation, the challenge is you have to see it and understand it yes. before you can automate it, right? <laughs> it's kind of like common sense if you think about it. Well, Do you I mean, agree with that statement? I think that's true, but I think you know, folks, even folks who have automated, they're like, well, is it actually doing what I think it's doing? And we, we saw this ourselves, we were developing this sock shop you know, um, example demo application for microservices, and we saw this container like kept appearing and disappearing in the live view, and we're like, what's going on there? And turned out there was a bug, and it was actually crashing and restarting. Yeah, you automated the wrong task. <laughs> well, it was crashing, it was, it was great. It's it was great, automating. it scaled up the bug. It ran most of the time. <laughs> it said it would crash and restart. Yeah. And so we didn't really notice, because it kept working, because it kept restarting, but, you know, that's the, that's the well, kind that's of the problem with scale, right? The scale is yes. you scale what you have, right? right? If it's good, it scales great. If it's got a little tweak in it, it could get, you know, go off, skew out, right? Yeah. So, 
that's a problem. So management software is a big part of what yes. we're seeing. State of the union there real quick, what, where, where we are with that. Are we, well, it's interesting, you know, what we saw with management uh, tooling is when AWS came along, it, it opened up opportunity for new players, right? And you saw New Relic emerge from that as a you know, really strong management offering designed for cloud, you know, a cloud infrastructure, cloud AES. Um, so we think the same thing is happening again with microservices because it's mm -hmm. not just about running VMs now, it's also it's about understanding the aggregate behavior of all your containers in a microservice and sort of being able to connect the dots for all those. Matthew, thanks so much for uh, coming on theCUBE. Appreciate the insight. Sure. Uh, great to talk microservices, orchestration, all this great stuff. Um, thriving, surviving and thriving, that's the theme <laughs> here at OpenStack Summit. Uh, continuing to um, mystify the skeptics who have predicted its death <laughs> years ago. Right? So, um, congratulations on your success at the Cloud Native Foundation and we'll be following right. you there. This is theCUBE, I'm John Furrier, Lisa Martin, live at Silicon Valley. We'll be right back with more Signal from the Noise after this short break. <laughs>